three, two, one. It looks like we are live. What's going on, fam? Uh, let me get my chat popped out here. Make sure that I got uh, everything ready to go. Yep, there it is. Okay. All right, Mitch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm actually taking this off so that I can. Well, that's fine. All right, everybody. So uh, y'all know because this show is riddled with technical difficulties. Before we officially start, we're gonna do our little our little testing process, and we need you to let us know in the chat if both of us are coming through <coughs> loud and clear. So I'm gonna start by me saying testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And my guest, who is going to remain anonymous until we start officially, go ahead and hit testing, testing, my friend. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. Now, everybody, just real quick, so we can go ahead and get this thing started, let me know in the chat if you could hear us both more or less evenly. I'm, I think I got it all worked out. I'm confident that I got it worked out, but I won't know until you tell me in the chat. Oh, yeah, baby. It's amazing. All right. Okay. Now, it is 2.55 p.m., so we're five minutes early. I guess before we officially start the show, I just want to kind of run through the chat and say what's up to everybody real quick. Uh, this is something I used to do when we first started this thing, and uh, I don't know, I laid off for a while, but I want to I wanna bring it back. So who we got in here, man? It looks like the first one to chime in on the chat was Inking Ink. So thank you for, for tuning in, my friend. Madison Smith is here. Uh, Madison, I asked you in the chat, how's the beta thing? Are you getting it sorted out? Let me know in the DMs uh, on Instagram. Uh, I've got another video coming for you to help you, I guess, to kind of lay out how the thing works. Um, got Gabriel here. We've got Liberty Graphics. What's up? What is up? Depth. P Dwig, what's up? Prototype 8, Ryan's here. John Guerrero's here. We got Mark Rosinski, Endless Printing, Prototype 8. We got Elite Pro Graphics in the house. Alexandri Alexander Valiquet uh, from Montreal. What's up, my friend? I think I feel like you're a newbie or that you're new to, at least to the show. Probably not new to the print industry. We got Chad. We got Mitch Milani, the Ink Locker Screen Print Studio. Very cool name. From Niagara Falls, Canada. Welcome. Uh, who else we got here? Alexandra Valique, uh, Jose Luis Bermudez, Mr. Ralph, DJ Emo, BAT. Everybody's here, man. Well, thank you guys, everybody, for uh, joining in and for hanging out with us. Um, what do we got? Looks like we got about 34 people in the thing so far. I think that's a pretty good place to start. So, we're going to go ahead and run the... E intro. That's right, baby. It's about to go hard up in here. What's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Welcome to another episode of the Print Life Live. Now, this is a podcast, but it's also uh, a video podcast, so you can watch it on YouTube. But if you didn't make it to the YouTube thing, you can always listen to it on iTunes, Google Play, the whole shebang. However, I did hear recently that since we transitioned to a new site, the episodes haven't been up, but I'm getting it worked out. The podcast will be back up within the week. So, you know, if you listen to it via iTunes or Google Play, it'll be back shortly. Anyway, uh, today we have another guest. And as you all know, I've been trying to evolve this channel and be transition from just me babbling at the camera to actually bringing in guests and being able to get different point of views of this industry and just, you know, trying to educate all of us in as many ways as possible. Today's guest uh, has spent, I got a, I got a little list here. Today has his, he has spent the last 
quite a few years fine-tuning the process of printing with water-based ink. So we're going to dive into the specifics of that. Um, we're going to talk about printing tips and tricks that he has discovered along his path of printing with water-based ink. As you guys, as most of you know, if you've dabbled in it in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> it's it can be it can be a frustrating process. So I'm excited just to to get some input from somebody who has who has been using it exclusively. I think that it'll be very useful. So let's bring the man in, and we would like to welcome um, Mitchell Skelton, the owner of the Factory Screen Print Company. How are you, my friend? Hey Cam, I hey, print, print fam. I'm doing awesome, man. It's a uh, great day. Thanks for making me sound better than probably what I are than I am. But uh, in my mind, no, yeah, no, Thanks you got lot, it, man. man. I mean, from you know when you reached out to me and told me what you were doing, it just seemed like the perfect fit for something like this. You know, with within the, this community, uh, I I don't frown on them but i have a little bit of a tendency to shy away from what i what i have coined print heroes which are maybe people that have 10 plus years experience that think that they know everything to us to me it's about building communities a community of people that just can share what they have and i do think that you have a lot of very valuable information to share um i guess we'll just get right into it guys um the first thing that i want to do is just kind of get from you or learn from you what, like for you, what started the seed that set you on the path, the, the printing path. You know, I've, I've noticed in this industry, some people have no screen printing background, yet this is what they get into f for various reasons. I'd like to know what your reasons are. Well, you, you, yeah, even if you go to our, um, our website or Facebook page, this is kind of something that, is in our about section my brother and i we were highly involved in our in our children's lives this is mostly for laura but here was the thing we kept ordering shirts and uniforms for for our kids and we kept getting crap back and i was like can't be that hard well <laughs> it is hard but um you know we, we thought let's just try something let's just try this Hot, kind of like a hobby kind of something to mess around with um but uh my brother came across a dtg machine oh that's a long story <laughs> well you know we what? Actually, the... i'd like to dive into that oh, oh we can yeah uh, uh but we bought the dtg machine and there's one thing that i am thankful for about the dtg and thus getting involved in that is that it got us involved in the screen printing business. Um, I no longer do DTG. Uh, if I if I needed, I would um, go ahead and contract that out. Uh, but that's just me. And where we live, the volume there's no there's not enough volume here for us to support the DTG. But it did get us in screen printing, um, and so we were thankful uh, for that. There, I have I have a lot of opinions about DTG. I don't I don't think it's it's um, I'm not like a lot of guys that say, oh, it's the future, it's going to knock out screen printing, and I'm also not the kind that says, oh, it, it's going to die. There's a place for it. It's got to get better, though. Gotcha. I agree with that. Yeah, I do agree. Um, so is so that is, I mean, so you guys just set off really because you felt like you could do a better job. I think that that's most of our story. That it, yeah. I, I mean, I made I owned a Subway sandwich shop for over 20 years, and, and, and so I, that was my experience. I've been in the business. My, my my parents were entrepreneurs. They were in they were in business as far, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, so I come from a business background, and and then when I dove into screen printing and and sold out of everything else, I. I approached it with a business from a business point of view. So, gotcha. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for that. So, when you when you got started in all this, like, what are some things that you felt that you did right? You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of things that you did wrong, but let's start with the positives. What are some things you did right that you feel at least set you off on the right path and have made you make it as far as you have? Well, I, I, I think. 
approaching it from the standpoint that it's a business first and foremost is what we did right. Uh, I think a lot of people will approach this as, you know, this is a hobby or this is something I'm going to do uh, to help out my friends and help out, you know, people around me. And that's cool. That, that, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. There, there may be a place for that, but if you intend to make money, your, your first thing should be, this is a business. I'm going to have to approach this as a business. And, and so even though we started out in our basement, you know, uh, screen printing in, a, in our basement, uh, this, this was going to be a business. So we priced that way. You know, we priced that way. We included overhead that we didn't have at the time. We knew at one point we would have rent. We knew at one point we would, uh, you know, have more uh, things to add that everybody else has if you have your own shop. Uh, and so we included that. We didn't come in and say, well, these guys down the street are selling shirts for this. We're going to lowball them just to get the business. Uh, we approached it from, from that standpoint. So uh, the other thing that I did was uh, once I realized uh, it wasn't as easy as, as it seemed. Yeah, yeah. As, as soon as it was in the basement with no heat trying to print a uh, white ink on a black shirt and uh, nothing happened, we decided, hey, we're going uh, to get some education. So um, sought out education and uh, just looked everywhere. Went to some, uh, you know, screen printing classes, went different places, went to uh, – to go and and gather whatever knowledge that we could get. So, do you feel like taking those classes was 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 a a good decision early on? Was it necessary for you? I I actually took one of the more popular, I, I guess you would say, mm. screen printing classes. I can guess who uh, they are. And, yeah. Yeah, and 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 uh, the didn't learn a lot the first time. Overload. I guess information overload. I went back for the sole purpose that uh, there was also a graphics class, learn how to use my Corel Draw uh, better. Because, you know, I made sandwiches for a living. I didn't know anything about art, art creation. I had a lot of great ideas, but didn't know anything about how to use the software. And, uh, and so I went for that. And then I stayed over for, for the class a second time. Uh, learned a ton because I'd already been printing. I knew, so that would be my suggestion on a class like that. Then went to a few shows. I see people, you know, it's show season, I, the ISS shows. A lot of people go, never, never even know that they have classes. Those things, man, there's some guys there that have are just knowledge dripping off of them. And, and that's, that's uh, something that I took advantage of. Yeah, it's interesting. I can't think of anyone offhand, but when you meet a, like a screen printer that's been in it for 20 plus years and they can talk about like mesh tensions and all of these crazy things to such specific details and you're just sitting there going, whoa. They're print geeks yes. and there are absolutely print geeks and they're, man, I would love to get a few of them on this show. Hopefully I can uh, get them in as time goes forward. Yeah, the first one I met was Charlie Tatlib, and he, you know that guy is—he's forgotten more than I than I know, and his, he was great, great, and they're all and just everybody's just a great people want to share, want you to succeed, and that that's that was uh, I guess that's the two things that I, I think that we did right. It, you know, approach it from a business standpoint, we sought out knowledge, we weren't satisfied with just sitting back and saying, I, I can't do this. I wanted, I wanted to be great. Yeah. It's, it's smart, man. Hey guys, just real quick. I know you're saying that there's a slight echo. Dude, I honestly have no clue. I've done the research on these whole Skype interviews. And apparently when you bring them into XSplit, some, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to get rid of it completely. So just bear with it. As long as you can hear it and you can understand it, it's as, about as good as it's going to get. If there's a slight echo on his microphone, don't know what to do. Um, so 
early on, I mean, you did the training, you felt like you got your foot or you got a good foundation built. But what is something that you kind of faced early on, like a problem that maybe you didn't expect that you had to get through? Problems were, I, 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 I get, we, I, I guess I'm trying to do more than my abilities. Uh, that, that was my, the biggest problem that I had more than my abilities. You know, you, you would see a design and you would think, oh, they only want one color. Uh, let's do three. And, and not only that, but try to do some half tones and, and, and things like that. When really, you know, the skill level wasn't there. Those, those, those were issues that, that we had, that I had. And, and, and other things, just not knowing my equipment and, and not, taking, um, not taking the time to really sit down and research not, on, not only how to print, but the equipment that I was using and what I needed to do uh, with, that, with that equipment to make it work the best for me. So. Well, yeah, that, that makes sense. But, you know, sometimes, I, and maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, but for me, I had, to, I had to go. I still continue to have to leave my comfort zone to actually learn a new skill. If I, if I, if I have to wait for someone to teach me, or so I don't learn shit. Is it similar? No. It's similar yeah, for that, you, right? That's the same thing I did with uh, with with water with water based inks. I, I went through. Uh, now maybe jumping ahead of you here, but with water based ink, um, I did the whole thing that I, I see a lot of people on the Facebook forums and, and things saying, you know, well, I'm, I want to test them, I want to work with them, and I did that. You know, I, I bought the inks and I was trying to test a few here and there. It wasn't getting anywhere, so I set myself a date, and and I said on this date, I'm not printing anything else plastisol. Yeah, really had no intention of going 100% plastisol, but um, on that date, I had a whole month worth of prints that I was going to do water based, and I said I'm going to do them. And that was way out of my comfort zone. And man, you talk about problem. <laughs> Did you, you talk about a hundred yeah. shirts? <laughs> yeah, hours and hours, and and it was it was intense to say the least. Yeah. Right on, man. So that is, I mean, because you dove in to those particular jobs with water base, I, I think it's time to start talking about it. Would you, at this point, consider water base printing your specialty? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, water base is our specialty. We have we have um, we have a lot of well. My business jumped after the first year of printing strictly water base. Uh, our, our business increased by fifty percent, uh, and we were doing nothing else different. And most of it was repeat business, and then word of mouth um, from from customers saying, "Hey, I hear I hear you can do really soft prints." And, and so we weren't really touting the water based as a selling point, uh, but uh, word was getting around. People were just noticing a difference. They were putting on a shirt, and, we, and we're in a real, we're in a very small town, uh, and, and and people were just noticing. Uh, they would wear a competitor's shirt. Yeah, it didn't feel that great, but they would wear one of our shirts, and it felt awesome. <laughs> and and uh, they it, word got around. That's amazing. Do do you guys specify with with acrylic water base, or do you you know like a or do you or is it mainly discharges and stuff like that? I don't do any discharge um, uh, acrylics. Is what we is what we use. I, I use two. I guess the two. My, can, can we mention brands? I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't get paid. Yeah, by I mean, anybody. I, I, I try know. not to, but sure. Yeah, dude. If you have a specific I, you know, just, brand that works, be, I mean, I, I, I use Green Galaxy, and then I use Virus. Uh, those are the two that I use, and and sometimes I use them together. Nice. Um, it 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 just depends on some. There's a place for both of them. There's a place for both of them. So, yeah, you know, 
uh, well, so we can definitely actually. I think in this particular case, it's going to be I absolutely mean, necessary. I, I try uh -oh, not to, hang on. But sure. Yeah, dude. If you have I, a specific you know, brand just, that just works. Be, I mean, oops. Sorry, guys. Um. Uh. But before we do that, like. Can you, I guess we need to elaborate on some stuff. So you can talk, absolutely talk about the brands and stuff because if they're working for you, you know, there's a reason why you've selected them. But I do want to elaborate on some of the, the things that you have figured out in terms of, uh, I, I guess, all the way down the line, man. And at this point, you can just kind of take the floor if you want to and just run with it, like from maybe from start to finish on how you do these things. Well, the first thing I got, we, 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 we dove, dove in. in. And uh, Cam and and and, and I, I really didn't know where to look for for the HSA inks, other than um, I had I had looked around at, at different places. And to be honest, I looked at Virus first, but um, I was scared of it because of it. It, it looked like uh, you know there was a lot of thinking to do and. And uh, and so I went to to the Green Galaxy inks, and I and I made a complete switch. Not only did I do those, but I switched my emulsion. Um, I was using already using a dual, dual cure that was good for water base, but uh, to the one that Ryan it promotes, and uh, that's that's that uh, the green cryo coat. So so that is so cryo coat is what you are currently using. No, I don't use it. Okay. Uh, that, that was a big, big problem. problem. That was a mistake. That's, That's kind of work. Um, I, I did that thinking it was the right thing to do. But uh, my equipment, now I still have just a, uh, a UV exposure unit, and I wasn't getting a good exposure with it. And, and I, had a lot, I was having a lot of screen breakdown. And, and I, I it just was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. Uh, uh, finally, abandoned that. And went back to uh, the the uh, the dual cure that I use now. And uh, do you mind and, sharing what that brand is? Yeah, it, <clears throat> it's the CCI. It's the WBP. Uh, Ryan, it sells it. You can also buy it through other places under the. I forget what the name of that is. Yeah, a lot. A uh, lot of distributor local suppliers carry CCI, so it's yeah. But you know, you just add, you just add the dye as though to it, and and. Uh, okay, that's an interesting thing. So, in your experience, adding the, the compared to the adding the the Diazo kind of helps, huh? In terms of I, waterproofing. I, yeah, I mean, I I run. You know, I run prints of runs of a thousand uh, shirts and. No, no breakdown. breakdown. No breakdown. Uh, you know, I wish I could have could have an experiment for a ten thousand shirt run. Hadn't had that yet. Uh, it'll come. It'll, it'll come. come. But it'll yeah. Come. I, but uh, you know, no problems. I, I, I'm tickled with it. Okay, so I mean, that sounds like it sounds like in some cases it does just come down to the product and the the inks and the emulsions that you use. So. We've got a nice recommendation, the CCI WBP. So I would say st starting off, right, if you're having issues with stencil breakdown, maybe look into that brand of emulsion and, and start there. Sure. Okay. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And then and so I, start, I started with uh, the, the Green Galaxy, easy to work with. Um, to me, the plus with those were over the virus was that, there's a lot, there's a broad range of already pre-mixed colors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that, that, that was a plus, but, uh, it's also, man, if you've ever, if you mix your own Pantones, uh, water-based inks are so much easier to mix, uh, a Pantone than Plasticol. Uh, I could not believe just because they're liquid and they, you know, yeah. If you, if you need a tenth of a gram, you know, it's a drop or two drops. It's not trying to knock off a little smudge off the end of a card. Uh, but uh, after, I, after we started printing with those, then I went and, and you know, I bought some virus inks and uh, love those too. Man, those things, the, the, uh, the, the wild, the wet on wet, because uh, my – 
I have a small automatic press, and and uh, it's six color press, so I need every color that I you know I can't spare anything because when I went to water base, I, re- I basically limited myself to uh, 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 if I have to do a highlight white to three colors, mm-hmm. and that's not you know the majority of your prints are, are nowadays people love the simple stuff, and that's good. But a lot of things you need the tons of colors with, and now I can I can print uh, five colors solid white flash, and then go and, and go around with the rest of the uh, four the four other stations that I have. So, so with so with this virus with these virus inks, I've done a little bit of research into it. I'm I'm really not familiar. Apparently, they do have, especially with water base. It's been a common issue with wet on wet, right? Especially with acrylics, with pickup and all that, do they they somehow prevent that stuff? The it, it's pre- and I don't know I don't know how it works, but uh, you, you warm your platens up, and it, it, and, it, and it's based off the temperature of the platens, and you know you're technically supposed to be able to um, if you got to watch the videos if you haven't because. Okay. The late the lady on the video, you know, touches it and goes, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. really funny. Um, but yeah, uh, that that's that's where it, that that's where the strong point for those is is that it, it water base the HSA's wet on wet for you know if you're doing a white shirt, it's just it, it's even. Better than plastisol, you can run faster even with, than with plastisol. But now, uh, when you're using an underbase, the pickup is a on for some reason on lighter colors. Okay, is uh, a, a, a little tougher to to deal with. On on lighter colors, it's actually tougher. Yeah, well, your reds, pinks. Uh, uh, but with pink. so, but with your SHSAs, you're underbasing it, so you print very similar to how you would do plastisol, right? I print, yeah, exactly like, um, exactly like we do with plastisol. Now there's, there, yeah, and, and I do a lot of dark garments. I don't, you know, I don't shy away from anything. I, I haven't, our, our, the town that we live in, our local high school, colors are black and Vegas gold, kind of like the, um, the New Orleans Saints, and and uh, we print tons of that with water-based things have for three plus years, so. Um, so, so I guess it's from, from what I'm gathering from what you're telling me and you, and you've experimented with the green galaxy stuff, but virus, has it ultimately become your, your favorite ink system in terms of water-based inks? I do. I like the virus, uh, and there's, there's a lot of plus because, um, with, uh, the setup that I have, which, you know, when we, when I started out and when I bought my auto press and obviously when I bought my, when we started out, uh, that was not on the horizon. So my, my, uh, dryer's not, it's not forced air. Uh, it's like recirculated or whatever the, the thing is. So, uh, we have to, add, we add, I had the low cure regardless of if it's, uh, the green galaxy or the virus we had the low cure to everything now virus recommends that you do it we do it too we even do it with plastisol now yeah well i mean it just makes sense and but with the with with the virus uh with with the green galaxy you have a pot life there uh of 24 hours and and to to be honest you don't really i don't really get 24 hours out, out of it not that I feel comfortable with using it. It just changes the appearance of it. You may could use it, I guess, technically. Mm-hmm. I don't. So when we're done, we try to make sure we just do enough for the run. But you have to do, you, you lose 100 to 150 grams of ink to the, I call it, to, to the screen um, because we're running on an auto, so. Is that, but, is, but I feel like you said that's exclusively to Green Galaxy brand. That's exclusively to Green Galaxy. Now, virus, you, you, uh, you don't have that pot lock. You add the little what? cure to it and, it and it stays. Yeah. You can, you can, you can pick it back up. Now, if you're, if you're on a long run, uh, you're not going to get all of, all of that ink back. Some of it's going to be, 
um, have dried up or getting gotten thicker to the point where you're like, this is not worth saving. So, okay. but most of it, most of it is. Uh, well, so, you, and you I, say. I feel like I want to elaborate on that because we, we have been using low cure additives almost exclusively. The reason we don't buy low cure inks is because we order out of state and there's shipping concerns when you buy pre-mix low cure inks, right? It's it complicated. Right. But so we add low cure to everything, but it does. Um, not so much with Plastisol, but with the water base, especially the Green Galaxy Comic White with their, is it, it's called Warp Drive. It has Warp a 24-hour pot life, so you really have, you're always trying to mix it exactly, and there seems to be a ton of wastage. So with Virus, this is a, ba- a thing of the past, is what it sounds like. It sounds like a damn campaign for Virus Inks right now, but if they're the it, best, yeah, well, they're the it, best. Yeah, it is. It's great. <laughs> The 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 yes. Again, like, again, like I said, said, the only issue I have with with viruses is if you need a navy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you you have to mix it. There's no there there's not a navy. Right. Um, and uh, but take for example today or earlier today I was printing uh, some. They were some light blue, uh, almost like Columbia blue shirts, and um, I, I use virus inks for everything. But it had a na- had a navy ink, uh, no underbase on that, and uh, it's almost like printing black. And I used Green Galaxy on those, so just, it's just because you you knew it wasn't going to be it was a single color. So you make your decisions. So you like just the the premix colors, and I get that sometimes. It's I like the, well, I, yeah, I like, yeah, I like the, the premix colors, right. and uh, you know we're get, we're getting ready to to uh, print. It was kind of a ru- kind of a rush job, so there was wasn't, wasn't a lot of forethought in that. Okay. Uh, and, and it's consistent. Now, you know, my, it, I, I, I like for people to know that if they're a repeat customer and they had Navy ink on this shirt before, it's going to be the same color. Right. That, yeah, that makes sense. And, and, and regard, I don't care how good you are. When you start mixing inks, there's going to be a different shade than that, a little bit different shade the next time. I know people, people will argue with that, but uh, unless you unless you keep that pot around and then you know it takes time to make sure you get that exact match every time now we have cu- we have customers that are are brands and then we we also have some customers that that are uh, uh, business to business that have their pantones that we we keep their colors and we mix lar- a large amounts of those uh, to make sure that when we do their reprints that the color stays the same and uh and then when we go to to have to mix some more we make sure we spend the time to make sure it's exact and if it's not we start all over again well that's just good customer service and that, i think that just makes you a good shop is taking those extra steps to do your best to match them do you so i i, I want to reiterate this and then we'll get off the brand thing but it, it from from what i'm gathering man it just really does sound like you're if you were going to give us one system to start with water-based ink, it just sounds to me like virus. It just sounds like that's a pretty good place to start. Let me, if I, if you've never printed water-based, water-based mm-hmm. I, I would start with some Green Galaxy ink or some gra- gra- just don't, maybe not buy, you maybe not buy the whole kit, buy some white, buy some black. Okay. Uh, buy some a color or two that you think there's there's not a ton of difference in the consistencies of things other than the white. Okay. Uh, but that'll give you some experience into how that that water based ink is going to work, and, and and then you can switch over. To, then you get, when you get ready to buy a whole system, uh, yeah, virus would would be the way to go. So there, have you had an opportunity to experiment with any other water-based inks like Matsui or um, I'm trying to think of some. Matsui is really the one that I got started with. Have you had a chance to mess with them at all? And I, I guess, I'm not, no, I've not messed with those. I'm, no, those are the only two okay. that, that I have um, experience with. So if you were going to compare, let's, let's just talk about white because no matter where you, where you are as a printer, white is your most commonly printed color, right? You're always using it. All right. So, so what are the difference? First off, we're going to talk about differences, and then I'd like to t- uh, dive into technique that you use to print white. But first okay. off, the differences between your your comet white and your virus white. Are there? All right. Any, go ahead. Yeah. Well, comet, comet white, white is. Um, I, it has more of a feel. Familiar with plastic saws, and you got a cotton white, 
versus a either a uh, an all-purpose white uh, and a plastisol. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a uh, uh, poly white. Right. Uh, your 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 comet white is almost like that cotton white. It's nice and and it's almost like Cool Whip. It's really easy to work with, really easy to stir, uh, real smooth, and, and you like that. The virus is has more of that that poly uh, plastic saw ink feel to it, but and nowhere near as thick, obviously. Um, it, it's it's a it's a lot thick, but it is a lot thicker. It's not. It doesn't have that airy feel to it that the Comet White does. Uh, however, on the shirts, uh, virus is soft. I mean, it's so soft, so smooth. The Comet White has a tendency to feel a little rough. Yeah, it fibrillates a little bit. It does. Um, but in t you don't print manually, so this is an interesting question because, like, for instance, whoops, these are annoying. We we print manually, and Comet White prints. It does it. The Comet White prints very similar to Plastisol, like like a Union Cotton White or something like that. You don't print manually, but can you? Do you believe that it would be almost too difficult? Because in my opinion, it's eh, almost impossible to manually print polyester whites, like pure poly Plastisol. It's exhausting. Mm. Is it going to be a similar thing with Virus White? No, no, it, it's, it's nowhere. No, it's. Um, um, I mean, I mean, you, you can, can you, you can, can actually, actually take a, 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 a quart or whatever, and uh, cause I, we buy um, well, I buy common white by the uh, five gallon bucket. But, uh, my vendor doesn't have virus that way yet, but by the gallon, then I just divide it out into little quarts. But you can take a quart and just pour it in, so into the screen. So it's easier to work with in in, in that manner. Okay. The it, the virus white, and there are two of those. They do have a cotton, and then one for uh, polyester blends and 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 polyester. But it also works with cotton. Um, the uh, the cotton one, um, I think it's called one one. Don't quote me. One twenty is the name of it. Okay. But uh, and then they have the virus Perfetto, uh, which is an all-purpose for polyesters and blends, and and uh, that's the only one I, that that we use. They're they're pretty similar in consistency, though. They they do have a tendency. Well, not they do dry in the screen quicker than Comet White does. Yeah, that's, that's the only, only thing. That's, that's a big drawback to me. If I was manual printing, I'd have to take a really hard look at at, at that um, as to how that would work. I even have trouble before I get started in production uh, on the auto. If I ever have any sort of issue with alignment and have to mess with it for a little bit, then I've got to go back and clean that white screen out before I get started. So. So, so drying is, it's virus, it is an issue. And I, and I would say that that is Comet's biggest selling point is, is it, it does, man. It just does not dry in screen. No, it doesn't dry in the screen. And, and, and the virus won't dry in the screen as long as you're printing. But, and, they say, and that's why I say if you're printing manual, that may be a consideration. It's tricky, yeah. Well, that's good to know, man. I, um, and it, it actually does kind of segue us into the idea of, of battling dry times and things like that. So uh, let's let's go down the steps. First off, in terms of setup, what you do to, you know, in my personal experience, you don't want to eek up until you're 99% sure that you're in, right? There's all these different things. But what are some, some pre-steps you do on press just to make water-based printing easier? What are some of the... I don't know. Did I ask that right? Does that make sense? You understand what I'm asking? Sure, sure. Well, exactly what you said. We we make sure, and 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 my phrase at the shop, which we ha we had to make a total switch, and in, in, in our in our thinking, was you've got to go slow to go fast. Yeah. Uh, and, and meaning, when you're setting up, you've got to take your time. Uh, and make sure that everything's in place. Um, 
we, you know, you don't, you don't want to have everything set up and then, and then do your strike off and make sure that you're, everything's aligned. And then you look around and, and somebody forgot to bring the shirts over. Okay. Then, Cause then, you know, then, then, then you're probably going to run into an issue, uh, with, because, because that ink's just going to sit there and you, and you're going to, you're going to have something, especially when the smaller openings are going to, somewhere is going to dry. Right. Um, so we, I set up, do a, spend a lot of, you know, you get your, you get your, uh, you do your pre-registration, you do, you, you line everything, uh, you make sure you think, you know, where your pressure needs to be on an auto, but we, we get every, everything set up. We get all of our shirts ready to go, ready. To, and then if it's a large order, more than we want to stack on a cart. Uh, we have all of the rest of the boxes pre-staged so that we're not having to, to run somewhere else and find them. And I'm sure for a lot of shops, that that's a no-brainer. We don't have a lot of room, so you know we, we have to think about where we're stacking boxes so that we can walk. Uh, but everything's, everything is, is in place before we start. Uh, then we start do, to do our strike, but when, when we start moving the, the squeegees, uh, we're pretty sure we're ready to start, uh, start printing, uh, production. Do you have a process in place? Like I know one of the things that, I don't know how you align your pallet, but we move our pallets, you know, to get our, to get our placement from the board. Do you make sure that all that stuff's every pallet's in the right position and all that kind of stuff? You have to have I almost do. a checklist, right? Right. Yeah. You, you have to have a, yeah, you have to have a checklist. I do, I do something a little different and oh, I say it's different. Um, but, uh, I, I try to, I, I try, unless it's a specialty placement, uh, to, to never have to move my, uh, uh, my, the pallets on my, uh, press. They, they're all, they're always in the same position. And, and, and I, I, I align everything through the artwork. Mm. And so where you have registration marks, then I, I've got a mark that is the top uh, of the, the, or the, the edge of the, of the platen. And, and so everything that, and, and I register to a, uh, to a film. Mm. I go around and, and, and register every screen to a film and, and everyone is, is uh, registered to that, to that one film. So, uh, okay. uh, but yeah, every, yeah, everything is, is ready to go. Everything's lined up. Your, okay. your pallets are lined up. Uh, you, you make sure that, um, you make sure you run some shirts through your dryer to make sure that at least the shirt is hitting the temp that you want to hit. Now you may have to adjust that once the ink starts running through. Yeah. What have you found with water base? Do you find that your dryers, your temps go up, or they go down once you actually start running production through the dryer? What well, surprisingly, don't I don't find a lot of uh, a lot of difference. Now, oh, uh, I, I do have a, a pretty good exhaust system that 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 will that brings uh, brings that moisture out. But when you're running the low cure. You're, you're, you're not, you're not really getting a lot. You're not really getting a lot of that burning a lot of that moisture off. Now I, you know, some people will do that and still, um, uh, and will still dry at a high temperature. But now I run, we run our through and we, we hit, uh, our target is 280 degrees. Right. Okay. And, 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 and if you do that, you don't see, uh, that typical where it comes out of the, out of the dryer and you, and you see a lot of steam or smoke coming off the, uh, the garment. So when you're low curing it, you don't, you don't think it has the same moisture burn off for whatever reason. I just thought it, I figured it would probably ramp. I don't know. I guess I chemically, I'm not really sure what, what's happening in there chemically, but maybe we need to talk to the maker of virus to figure out what's happening. We may need to do that because chemistry was not my stand <laughs> strong point, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it is interesting that there's not as much burn off. Um, moving on. How about uh, um, diving into actual dry times on press? What have you figured out 
again, it doesn't necessarily. It, hopefully, there's some very there's some similarities between manual printers and auto printers. But a lot of the people on this channel are manual printers, so I guess just whatever tips you got, man, it all helps. Green gap, uh, green gap with the green galaxy inks. Um, I have. Um, uh, I go back to those because they're so user friendly. Mm. I have had uh, jobs that are set up and then uh, something demanded my attention, had to stop printing, uh, try not to do that, but uh, we, ha we had to stop printing. And, and you can come back in, in 20 minutes and run a few really hard passes through and clear that screen right back out. You can, yeah. It, the comet white, it's, cra it's cra it trips me out because I've tried with, with the Suis and stuff, and it's like the drying is just stressful. But comet yeah. takes a lot of that stress away. Yeah, uh, virus, virus. If you do that, you, you're going to have to get get you a, 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 a bottle of a spray bottle. We, you know, we, we keep a a bottle of water in a spray bottle, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to you're going to have to go and and spray that that open area. And, uh, and and cleaned it out to get started back again. Okay, so I, so Green Galaxy is a good place to start just to kind of get your feet wet. In, it, in yeah, it, it's it's base. so much it's so much more user friendly, especially when you're starting. Okay, but let's so let's say you transition over and you you're running uh, and you do have to stop. Phone rings. You're a one man band. Phone rings. It happens all day every day, and you have to. Stop printing, and you're going to come back, and you got to open up your screens. What is your process for getting a screen open so that you can start again? Uh, well, uh, just just uh, just like I said, I'll use a uh, we we take our shirts that we uh, you know because we don't screw anything up. We don't have any misprints, so you know these are all you know just test shirts. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, we cut, cut those up into rags, in in a in a in a, and we and we we'll, uh, just spray. Sometimes you can just spray. It depends on the time that uh, you've been gone. You you either have to we'll spray that uh, that water into the open area and then rub, and then wipe it down, or sometimes you can just spray a little little bit of water onto that uh, onto a rag and. And, and and rub on it and, and you're good to and you're good to go okay. and, and then just uh basically run around like you've done a, you're you're doing a, a a test print for to make sure you're, you're checking registration uh and and that you know you're you're talking about less than five minutes to do that so i guess for us we, we i remember when i first started printing water-based ink i i was told that you could to keep the the inks wet that you would mist them right you would take your water bottle and you'd mist them but what i remember happening is even if you had did the flood so you you do it it's starting to get a little dry so you do the flood to make sure that the openings are covered with ink and you would mist it but even then when you would do the print it would be kind of the and there would be like yes. a bleed what do you have you guys found a method to doing that or do you just avoid that altogether and just change the ink out when it dries up Avoid it. Uh, we avoid it all together. What we like to do is is try to consistently keep fresh ink in in, in the screen. Uh, not not to overload it with a ton of ink, but to uh, just keep adding to it. That's that's a little bit more of that. You got to go slow to go fast. It would be so much easier to just load up everything that you think you need. Uh, if, if it's, it's a, if it's a short run of you know 50 shirts, yeah, that's, that's easy to do. But longer runs, you, you've got to just continuously add uh, ink to that. Uh, virus does not; they they discourage you from adding water or misting uh, with with water for whatever reason. I, like I said, virus is more technical if that's the right term. Than, than a lot of the other water-based yeah, or, or HSAs. From my experience, misting is like a myth. It's it's just not something you can. Yeah, I, I don't I don't recommend the the misting. Like you said, if you if you uh, if you spray uh, water over the top of it, you're going to get that blob. You're going to get a, 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 a you know no I wouldn't say a discoloration, but you you're going to get a lot. You're going to get light spots. Yeah, that's what it is. Where that water is. Yeah. 
Um, uh, so, but that is, so that is how you clear it. So if you're going to clear your, if you're going to clear your screens, if it happened to dry, you'll throw like a, a scrap shirt on one of the, you know, cause you don't have mm -hmm. misprints. So it's, a, it's a no, we don't miss print, specifically so. made for it. And you load <laughs> it on there, you clear your ink, you wet, do you wet the openings and basically just do some dry prints to try to clear it? Or do you, do you wet the openings? Print, oh, wet, no, it, yeah, yeah, wet, wet the, the openings, openings and then that, just, just take a rag, rag and just start, just, just start rub it rubbing, rubbing, man. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, rub it. All right. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah and, and, and usually from the squeegee, from the squeegee side is, is, is fine. You may leave behind a small bit of, of, of water, um, but uh, you just, just squeegee the ink out of the way and uh, spray, spray a little bit of water, scrub it. And then, and then do your, do, do your, uh, uh, two or three passes with a squeegee on your tester. Cause, cause the thing on your is tester. when you're clearing, you will have blotching and stuff, right? As you're exactly. Okay. You're right. So I think that that's a very, very good tip. So you, you do have to have some sort of stack of shirts that are available for ultimately for wiping and clearing the blotch to get a clear openings. Right. right. What about, and this is something that manual printers will do. And even my, my dude, Jesse, he's a trooper out there, but he'll be on press and he'll just be hit. If it's something does clog, he'll just grind and grind with the squeegee trying to open it up. In most cases, you should just clear it, water the openings, a couple passes, get it cleared and, and you're back on, you're back on it. Right. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, Love the, the other thing that's kind of a pain with with the water base is when when you get a uh, when you when you get some lint in, in, in your print area uh they they're uh i mean you've got you you've got to stop and, and get that off it just tends to want to hang there yeah it won't go away it will not go away it, you, you, you you're lucky if, it, if it's going to go away for some reason that water base that hsa just wants to that, that that little piece of gildan fuzz to stick there. <laughs> so let's talk about that. I mean, I've come to, I've come up with all kinds of crazy solutions trying to battle lint. It just it doesn't seem to be as common of a problem with plastisol. It's there, but water base really seems to stick it on, in those openings, and it won't go away until you've cleared it. Right? What do you do to battle or to prevent lint in the from the in the first place? Do you have any processes? Yeah, well, well, you gripe and complain a lot. And that doesn't help. <laughs> nope. Uh, but uh, if if it's a if it's a really if it's a if it's a substantial run, uh, and, and you've got a sp and, and and we have a spot, we'll we'll run a a delinting screen. Um, and, and you know, head number one, we'll we'll run a delinting screen. Uh, if, it's if it's a if it's a small run and they appear that they've got just a ton of of um, uh, a, a ton of lint, then then we'll have somebody with you know run a lint roller over over those things. And uh, but it is time. Most mo right? it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. Mo most most of the most of the things we print on nowadays, uh, fortunately, have tend to be. Uh, yeah. higher quality shirts and we, we, we have we don't have that issue um i remember i, I, I did to, when i started loading it was this to battle lint you would just you would pull it off the pile and you would snap the living shit out of it right right like wind, <laughs> just trying to clear the ink but i have noticed that it doesn't seem to be lint doesn't seem to be as common these days for some yeah it's, it's it's gotten a lot better i wonder if um, it's a manufacturing thing or something i don't know yeah, you, yeah, you see, see a lot more, more uh, a, a lot more string. Seems seems a lot more string see, on cheaper shirts now than you do lint. So, if you see a lot of lint, call your supplier and complain because it's probably something that their shop's dirty. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. Well, that's that's. I think that that's a pretty good tip, man. Um, I feel like we've tackled that. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I didn't really write a list. I, sh I wish I had read a list of all of the many problems that come with water-based printing. But can you think of any other problems or tricks that you've discovered as, as you're going through it that might help some other people? How about mesh count? Let's talk mesh counts. Okay. Uh, for whites. Uh, yeah. How about wh what mesh count do you tend to go with when you're printing white with water-based? Uh, 
You know, I go, I go back and forth, and it depends if I'm going to do a highlight or, or not, uh, of course, but uh, um, or if I need if I need a highlight. Well, I have a question. I, I actually want to interrupt there. You know, I, it, with Plastisol, you always did the highlight so that you weren't overbuilding the underbase, right? You you were highlighting right. it mainly just to keep the hand of it down. But do you, I mean, I guess it, it, uh, obviously if you're doing like a simulated process kind of thing, you'll do a highlight, right? But if it's a spot color, you just do a double hit on white and you're good to go. Yeah, uh, well, if you can if you can get the coverage, uh, like to, today on those light uh, lighter blue shirts. Had a had a white ink and and uh, there was a, a, a portion some text actually that was uh, white and with with the water base is a double you, you got to double hit the water base anyway um, but it was um, it was two hits and it looked it perfect solid coverage so uh, the 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 highlight is for speed. Uh, okay. For us, otherwise you, you got to rotate. You, you know, you got you, you've got to let that thing that thing spit around twice instead okay. of uh, just coming through once. But so you're not uh, highlighting for the same reasons, like in like with Plastisol. Also, it was for I think for speed on autos, but also it was you know to keep the hand down, right? That, right. That's not as much of a con of a concern with water base in my experience no, anyway. But now. Uh, Sometimes with water base, if um, you know, really on dark shirts, we'll do white flash, white flash. So you do a base, and and, and that base may be uh, like a two hundred, and then flash, and then bait, uh, a highlight of a two thirty. And but but you'll get by with uh, just one, uh, maybe one coat or one one pass on that on that highlight of of white. Okay. Just to make sure you get it bright enough. Gotcha. And so if you, you build your stencil, if still, if you build your stencil up, uh, you can you can get a nice white on onto a uh, black shirt with water base, and the virus white is uh, is is pretty good. Uh, I've even had some customers that like it. I hate using the term distress and vintage. A lot of people get confused but they like a more vintage look not distressed with lines all you know all through it but mm -hmm. uh you know vintage as in th this shirt was from 1970 and i've washed it a thousand times right and they they want that look and 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 with water water based why you can you can screen that uh, if your stencil's built up enough right, then you can you can get your you know two passes, sometimes three, but usually two passes, mm -hmm. and you come out. You got a really nice looking vintage white on a black shirt. Yeah, yeah, kind of got that heathered white look to it, right? Exactly. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, and you did mention mesh counts of two. It sounds like you're on average going two hundred. With with your with your base white, or if you're doing a spot white on a black shirt, you'll usually print through a 200 mesh. Yes. Okay. Yes. So in the manual world, that's it's tough, just physically, right? <laughs> it's what. Oh yeah, it's tough. tough. Yeah, you, you you're you know I, you pro probably a one. Uh, I would never want to use a 110 with with water base. I just don't see that. Uh, and, and then when you start going with colors. Mm. Uh, Nothing less than a 230. But, I, you know, other than for anything for, for uh, process, we, we stick with 230s and 280s. Okay. You, you say for process. You mean in terms of... No, other than shop? process. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then what would you do with water base if you're doing some sort of process or, or a, some, like a sim job or something like that? What's your yeah. go-to mesh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, most of the time I'm I'm going to contract that out to somebody. <laughs> okay, yeah, well that's right. You have a, color limitations, don't you? I've got color limitations yeah. on, we don't the, on, do it either, on, maybe. on those. I could use the manual; it's still here. Yeah, uh, but uh, it but uh, I choose not to. Okay, and it's just not we it, we just don't have a big a big call for that. So yeah. that last last several years, that's that's uh, that's what I've been doing. Okay. Uh, with those, but you, you take for example, you got a good, a good a black ink, and if you put that a black water base ink in a one in a one fifty eight mesh, it's 
literally will just start dripping through the mesh. Right. Just sitting there. Gotcha. So, so uh, uh, even even with the manual, I would I would suggest a two thirty. You might you might try two hundred if it, if you find that difficult, but I don't think you will. No. Uh, not with the water, but that stuff's so runny. It's not it's not the same as plastisol. So, okay, so that sounds pretty good. I mean, if you're doing water based white, it's a little bit different. But if you're doing the colors. 230 up is a pretty good place to start. I think that's a pretty good baseline. And for you and your experience, 200 is pretty good for white. Pretty, pretty good. good, yeah. I like that. So that's a good place to start. Um, man, I feel like that's that's pretty good. I'm trying to think. Uh, I guess we could kind of start sprinkling in some questions here. I was going to say, but I forgot to tell everybody to hold their questions until the Q&A portion. But there are some questions here. Um, while I'm looking for one, though, I did want to know – I mean, we've talked in depth about water base. Is there anything I've missed or that you might want to share that I didn't cover? Any tips, any secrets, any little you, – any little – there is one that I know of that I'll share at the end of yours, but this was something told to me by – any tips? Well, well I, I will, will say this. this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there are some, some additives that I, I would say don't skip out on um, if you go with um, – I, and I, I would say any system, I'm not familiar with Matsui, you are, so you can chime in on those. But like with uh, with uh, the Green Galaxy, there's, uh, and, and it's not really, you, you've got to search for it. But they, I think it's Slipstream is what they call it. But it's just a silicone additive. And it really helps keep your ink to where it will stay uh, open in the screen, not dry as quick. But it just makes it easier to work with. Okay. Uh, we will use that. We add that in our a, a little bit of that in our white. I think they recommend five percent max. Okay. And um, but uh, virus has uh, additives as well. You got you, you have to have them. Uh, and, and so these are when just, you these buy anti drying additives mainly, or the they have well you have you have the 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 low cure, which the low cure also has uh, some other uh, additive has some other properties. Uh, which in talking with them, they, like I said, they recommend that, that you add that to all of your ink, regardless. Um, if you have, if, if you have the forced air or not, because it helps the ink to, to apply or, or, or to stay on, onto your shirt and just, just really last longer. Your print lasts longer. Um, yeah, I'd like to chime in but on something with that before you keep going too. And sure. it was our it was our experience with the Green Galaxy White. The same thing, the wash fastness fastness seems to be uh, better when you add the warp drive additive to to Green Galaxy as well. It seems to adhere to the to the cotton or to the it just it seems to adhere to the shirt better. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot better. Uh, and I think that's part of the, like I said, the, the chemistry of the inks that, that just, that just helps it. Uh, but then, uh, you've got, uh, virus as a, redu- a reducer. I found that, uh, I was I wasn't using that until I had some inks that had the low cure in it and, uh, I, I had carded off, you know, when you re- tried to reuse it after several times and, um, it started getting a little thicker. Add a, you can add a little of that reducer to it. You don't want to add water to it, so that's the purpose of, of this. Right. Um, and 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 then they have um, um. Do they have any fixer additives or anything like that? That you know, like Matt that's has the one. That, that's the. I'm trying to think the name. Uh, it's not called. It's not fixer. Hold on, one second. I want to disappear off screen. I can tell you. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, just I can't just, say just, it. just a second. Anyway, Scott, there's three. Says, real quick, Scott McLean was just saying hey, he wishes his boss knew. That you go to, to <laughs> he says he wishes his boss knew that you go slow to go fast, like you said <laughs> earlier. Very nice. Hey, go ahead, Scott. Not not when not when you start printing, you go like a banshee when you start printing, but just to get started. You so know, you go slow in the setup. It's in, in the, the setup, setup right. right? You're methodical in the setup, and then you hustle in the print. That's right. Love it. Uh, 
but uh, there's there's the, the the two the the two additives. Would you, would you grab that that bottle for me that's sitting on that counter right there? That white bottle. Yeah, that one right there. Thank you. Retarder. That was the name of hydrocryl retarder, and that helps that helps with um, um, drying in the screen. Uh, and they recommend that you add the the low cure and the retarder uh, to those to those inks as, as uh, just a standard. Love it. Perfect. Um, all right. Now there are. Let's see what we got here. I think that uh, other than that. Uh, man, we've gone on so long about the water-based stuff. I had all these other questions I wanted to ask you, but I just feel like you've really you've really given us a lot of insight into the, just the process of water-based printing. Uh, we know the additives. We know the mesh counts. Anything we missed that you feel like I didn't cover? No, oh, just, just uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm high on the water-based inks, ob obviously. Uh, they, they, they give you a something that probably your competitors around you aren't offering for for the most part and we got in we got into i got into this uh when i got into this is but when everybody started uh having issues with the uh when they took the phthalates out of uh, the ink and i don't know if you remember all you know all the problems that uh or some of the problems people were having especially with white ink um until they really nailed nailed that, and the government was really involved in this. And I'm I'm not making I'm not going to make this political or anything. It was just a fact, you know. Uh, it was the EPA? I'm pretty sure was really bearing down, and 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 plastisol was going to be difficult to get and work with. And we we were going the way like you know in Europe. Uh, I guess 80 percent of, of the prints are water-based or something else, not plastisol. Uh, and, and that's not because those guys over there just want to do water-based. It, it was kind of forced upon them, and it was coming for us. So I said, I'm getting ahead of the curve. I'm going to be ready for this when it happens. Well, we had an election, and things, you know, were different after the election, and a lot, a lot of those. Uh, a, a lot of those things that were coming down the, the pipe for us didn't happen. Um, is that good or bad? I, you know, I'm, I don't know. But uh, for me, I'm glad that I made I made the change. And, and that's not to say that you know in another couple of years that that those things won't get geared back up again. Right, right, right. Um, and HSA approved is it? It is a. Um going to be if you're already printing with those approved inks which are mainly water-based inks right you're going to be more compliant when that does eventually come down the pipeline and they start limiting stuff all right and if, you, if any if you, if you ever pick, pick up a brand or look to pick up a brand that does uh, a, a children's line, line that's something that they look at mm -hmm. uh, some, some brands don't want uh, any plastisols mm -hmm. uh, printed so that that's that's a uh, that's a concern uh, so you want to be ready. Uh, you want to be ready to to print these HSA inks, and uh, so that that's what got us started in in this. And so I, I believe uh, that's my vision of 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 the future is that eventually the print industry will start moving more toward these alternative. We call them alternative now. They'll become standard, and plastisol will be, you know. The minority. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'll bet you that is coming. I, I think so. I know that they laid off it for a little while, but you were kind of going into the thing that with Plastisol, when they started removing uh, the phthalates, th there were it was coverage issues, right? They when they had to when they couldn't use them, they had all these issues with getting coverage, and that's when that whole real bad like almost fibrillation started becoming a problem with Plastisols and stuff like that. And they, well, yeah, they even had some. Uh, I, I think it was uh, international. I know I, I was using the IC Legacy, uh, and and they were uh, they were having issues uh, when it got got too hot in shipping. That people was were they were opening their ink up and it smelled like a dead dog inside the 
inside there, and they attributed that to uh, this uh, removing of, of, of the phthalates from, from it and whatever replaced that. Uh, but that also, that ink was bad. You couldn't use it. So they were, you know, kind of like shipping emulsion when it's, when it's really cold outside. There, there was issues getting ink in the summer, which is kind of a bad deal. Yeah. Uh, that's when we need to print, so. Well, that sounds good, man. Uh, you guys, make sure you start submitting your questions to him if you have any questions that we didn't get. Um uh, and you know, or that we didn't cover for you. Just start submitting them in the chat now, and I'm going to just kind of start running through this. Oh, While you're looking, I will say, yeah, yeah please, don't forget. By all means. Yeah, you're using you're using these um, low cure additives. Uh, you you have to kind of bump up your production schedule or inform your your client if it's a rush job. You, you, those inks have to be on the garment for 48 hours before they're supposed to be washed. Okay, interesting. I have actually never heard that. So even after they've – and also there's one that we didn't talk about, which is tunnel times. Because you, you said you don't have a forced air dryer or anything like that, right? Right. What kind of – what have you found is more – really the more, the more appropriate question is what's the minimum time you can keep that thing in there? Or do you – Technically uh, – it, as long as that ink hits 280, you're you're or well, at some some of them have a they have a time uh, a temp range. Yeah. Um, and and 280 is like they say you know this is the, that's the high range, and so that's where we try to hit. Okay. But but uh, uh, and and we run it as slow as as possible. Okay. And I've got an eight foot tunnel, so it's not that it's not that big of an issue but you're you know you can still hitting two to three minutes probably two and a half three minutes in there. right i'm hitting about two minutes is what is what that's what we're hitting okay and but um uh you still the the inks say that and, and this is my experience i don't recommend it to my customers but i you know i i like to abuse my prints you know i'll print things for myself i'll print extras for cut from customers take them home and wash them in ways that you're not you, they're not supposed to be washed uh just to test and um uh, with green galaxy with the heat with, with the heat we were uh we're running at and and the dwell time that we're getting um i was finding that that 24 hours was plenty of time okay uh, and maybe less. I just never tested less. But with virus inks, you gotta hit that 48 hours. If you've got a, uh, especially with um, an underbase, if you you've got a white, you got that underbase, and then you've overprinted, and you wash a shirt after 24 hours, you've lost your your top color, and it comes off like none other. It, it's it's it, it just disappears. For the most part, there there may be a remnant, but that's about it. Interesting. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so there must be some kind of chemical catalyst that's happening within that forty-eight hours. Yeah. Something yeah, I, 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 it's a. It, I think it, it helps it bond, but then that that helps that water uh, evaporate. Okay. And and once that water, because really what or or I guess it's really not water, but wetting agent, whatever it is, uh, it, it helps that to finally disappear okay well that, that's that's perfect man now i do have some questions here popping in and we're gonna we're gonna start here uh this is from jason ends his question is uh are water-based inks 100 percent 100 percent safe for children's clothes i know there's still chemicals in water-based inks well That would be something. Well, I, I will say this: mm. that that is, that's that's the the uh, that's the recommendations for chil for children's clothing. Mm. Now that the phthalate has been removed from plastisol, that that uh, that helped out with children's clothing. But most of your bigger children's clothing brands um, ha are, are requesting water-based or silicone uh, ink. Um, but th now, and, now, now this does not include discharge prints. This is this is HSA certified water based acrylics ultimately. Yes. Okay. Um, but, but now, now uh, the the 
the the chemicals once once the ink is dry uh, shouldn't shouldn't be an issue. There's a lot going around about you know you know it's it's eco friendly ink and, and technically I think the process is more eco friendly. I know the process is more eco friendly because when you get through, uh, you don't have to use chem a lot of the chemicals clean to clean up with. You're just you know it's water. You're cleaning up with water. Um, we've eliminated 80%, I guess, of the chemicals that we use. You know, we we use water to clean off our screens with. We we use a dip tank to re reclaim, and that's about it. You know. Yeah, that's perfect. So uh, that that is uh, some. We don't we don't uh, advertise that we are use eco friendly inks, but that we do promote that our process is more eco-friendly than standard screen printing. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, let's see what else we got here. Ew, I missed that one. What are your thoughts on it? Okay, this is an interesting one. It's a little off topic. It's not on the topic of water-based printing at all, but it is a good question. I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Chris Twice is asking what your thoughts are on financing screen print equipment. So actually taking out a loan and, and buying the stuff that way. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it depends on where, where you are, obviously. Uh, not as, as far as if you're, if you have the volume that it's demanding that you upgrade your equipment, but you don't have the cash flow, then I, I think it makes sense to, to go ahead and, and, and finance. But if, if you're financing based on the prospect of getting more business, it doesn't make it doesn't make a, a, a lot of a, a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, I you know I I finance my uh, my auto press, but that for for two reasons had to had to had to have it. Business was was at the point that we we had that we had to have it and and. Um, it wasn't something that we had planned for when we had that expansion uh, of our business. It just, um, w we couldn't keep up with the manual press. So we, we had to do something and we try to plan for, for the growth and, and plan for additions, but it doesn't always work out that way. So no, no, it does. That's not. what financing is for. Yeah, just true. be smart. Just be smart about it. I think that's good advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really have anything to add on that. I have my own opinions on financing stuff, but uh, I still end up I, I financing prefer, things too. You know, so. I, I prefer not to. I like to be debt free. Yeah. But uh, my dumbass took out a loan for software for a full for a full prospect. So so I can't speak on it. You do, I think you go uh, just on. Sometimes it's just instinct, right? Even if the no, I don't know. I don't know, man. I could talk about it for a long time. I try. I try to run my personal life debt free yeah. and my business in a way that makes sense so that I can continue to grow. Here's something. Yeah, here's something that you could possibly that might be a thing too. If you're going to finance equipment, uh, you know, you're still backing it by your personal name, but if you're if you're in, if you're incorporated or you're a limited liability, you can at least finance it under the company's name so that you could technically file bankruptcy against, you know, if everything went sideways, I think I don't know. You still guarantee it personally, but it's at least a little bit disconnected from your personal finances if you finance it mm. through, through a corporation. I don't know. I don't know what the legalities are on that, but it may be something to look into if you're considering going that route. Yes, yeah, and it's not like and it's not like a house. It doesn't retain its value. It's like a car. As soon as you get it, that values. You know, for the most part, shot. It's probably better than a car, but yeah. You know, I've never looked into what the depreciation is of an autom of automatic equipment. I know they hold, they have a, they do have a value, but I don't know what the depreciation is once it's installed and running. I would like right. to be an interesting uh, theory. Anyway, um, that's pretty much. It looks like that's all we got, dude. And for some reason, I didn't turn my phones off, so there are people straight up knocking <laughs> on my garage door. <laughs> Um, before we lock this out, I do want to give you the opportunity to just to, to plug some of your stuff. Let's talk about your your uh, your company site, any of your social media links, and of course, I will link all of those in the description of this video when we wrap. But just sure. plug well, away, plug away. I, I uh, well, I, I I 
I do some, uh, you know, with, within a relative, if I can, if I can be of uh, assistance to, to anybody, uh, consulting work, I, I'll go and uh, I do some consulting work. If you want me to come work with you or your employees, and um, uh, that's easy to to email me. Actually, you can contact me through our, our website. My email is the factory tn. The tn is for Tennessee, which is where we're located at outlook.com but then our website is thefactorytn.com okay uh, are you li- are yeah. you active on any social sure we've got our, our facebook is the factory apparel and then uh, uh, instagram is the factory tn factory tn any plans for um, content creation media uh, youtube channels anything like that in the future that people could keep an eye out on or not yet Okay. Not, Not yet. yet. All right. Well, I'm I, I leave it to the interesting people folks like you, Cam. Thanks, people want to. People want to know what Cam has to say. Yes, they do. I'm an interesting guy. Thank you, dude, so much for taking the time. I know that you're a busy guy, so we really appreciate you coming in and just being willing to share some of your information with water-based printing. It's been hugely helpful. I learned a lot. Uh, if you guys have any other questions. Uh, that maybe we didn't address go ahead and leave a comment in this video i'm sure that mitch has no problems coming in and addressing those comments on the video at a later time so ask your questions uh let's get a little dialogue going on in this video uh make sure, sure to sh- go ahead go ahead no i was like, sure i'd be glad to okay cool and then make sure that you guys share everything this video share it on all the social media platforms uh make sure to share the print life on all your social media platform forms this is a family and we're building it one person at a time. Thank you so much, Mitch, for being here, my friend. Uh, that's it. We're done. Hey, have a good one. Appreciate it. Later, guys. See you.